So here we are, we're progressing nicely and we're on part four. We're gonna actually install and configure the Active Directory Domain Services role on one of our virtual machines. So that's where we're at in the process. I am gonna use the corp.miim.com domain and here we are at step four. So I've gone ahead and taken the luxury of remoting in just like we did in a previous video. I'm RDP'd in to my server and I'm ready to install that role. So pretty simple, all I have to do is come up here to manage, click on manage and say add roles and features. It's gonna open up the add roles and feature wizard. We're going to choose next. The installation type we want is a role-based, feature-based installation and we'll choose next. I wanna make sure I'm on the right server. I am, I'm on my first server. MIIM SVRDC 0001. This is where I want to install and configure Active Directory. So I'll choose next, and I am simply going to choose Active Directory Domain Services. Now it's going to tell me that in order to install ADDS, it's going to want to install some other features. I'm simply going to say add those features. So if you notice, it's done some file and storage services and some other things that it's going to need for Active Directory, so I'll choose Next. I'll go ahead and let it default here as well for features. Those are the features that it needed to install. I'll choose Next. And then it just gives me a quick summary of what I'm installing. I'll choose Next. And then I am gonna go ahead and choose Restart the Destination Server Automatically. And notice it's gonna give me this warning. When it restarts, it is gonna disconnect my RDP session. So I'm gonna to have to get back in, but I'm gonna say yes and choose install. Now, it'll just walk through the install. Install the feature set. This is not configuring Active Directory. This is just doing the installation. I'm gonna go ahead and pause while it installs. And then of course, I'll have to re-log into my RDP session. We'll come back and we'll configure our first domain controller. So hang out, we'll be right back. So there we go, it's installed the role. I'm gonna go ahead and choose close. And if you notice up here, I have an exclamation point. I'm gonna click up here and I need to promote this server to a domain controller. So I'll go ahead and select that. And it says add a domain controller to an existing domain. Nope, this is a brand new domain for me. So if we were doing something where we were connecting this Active Directory domain controller to an existing local area network, then we would do that. So I need that root domain. And remember, I was gonna call mine corp.miim.com. So it's a new forest, it's a brand new domain. Make sure you spell it right and choose next. So you'll put in whatever your test domain is going to be. At this point, my forest functional level will be server 2012 R2, that's fine. We'll let it, I'm gonna pause while it just configures this. And once that completes, it's gonna ask me for a password for the directory service restore mode. Now, in a test environment, you may wanna make this the same as your admin password, but in a production environment, this should be a unique password that you remember to write down, remember to save in a safe place in case you ever need it for restoring Active Directory. So I'll choose next. It's gonna tell me that a delegation, uh, delegation of the DNS server cannot be created because there is no authoritative parent zone. No kidding. This is my first domain controller. This will be the first DNS server in the domain. So I'll choose next. It's going to go ahead and configure a NetBIOS name, which corp will work just fine for me. I'll choose next. Now here's where we wanna be really careful. This is where we instantiated that new disk for, and if you remember, we gave it the S drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and change all of these to S. Challenge with my mouse there, S colon, and I will choose next. That way all the NTDS and the sysfault, everything will go over to that new drive, that second drive that we instantiated. 
Here I'm just going to make sure everything is correct. There's my corp.miim, net BIOS name, forest functional level is fine in my case. I don't need any backward compatibility with a local area network or a domain that might be running previous versions of Windows Server, and I will choose Next. At this point, it'll go ahead and quickly do the install, making sure it can validate all of my install properties. I'll pause while it does this. When it's done, you can go through, read any of the warnings that it's giving you, Prerequisite check is complete. That's what we're looking for. All prerequisite checks have passed successfully. We are ready to install. So now it'll go ahead and configure Active Directory for this domain. I'll go ahead and pause while it completes. Now, as expected, once it's done configuring and it promotes that virtual machine that we built to a domain controller, it is going to want to restart. So you're going to be disconnected from your remote desktop connection and you'll need to reconnect. So as you can see, I'm reconnecting, this time reconnecting back into that server as its domain controller. You'll see it instantiate the default domain controllers policy and log us in to the corporate domain. So at this point, we'll look at server manager real quick. And as we can see by the dashboard for my DC0001, it now has Active Directory installed, it has DNS, and we're ready to move on to installing the second server. Now, make sure you watch the next video closely. It'll give you the details you need in order for the second server to be able to reach the first server, reach DNS, and thus become a second domain controller on our new Active Directory domain.